What defines an RPG? Is it a vast, expansive environment? A wealth of well-written lore and memorable characters? Or is it a plethora of mechanics and gameplay elements that add depth and identity to the genre? Maybe it's a more subtle trait, class selection. From iconic shield and sword to something a little more arcane, you'll see the same class tropes making a resurgence time and time again. The question is though, which one do you pick? Choosing your starter class will be the first decision you'll be tasked with in Dark Souls Remastered. Unlike previous installments, Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, stats cannot be reallocated at any stage during your playthrough, making your initial choice all the more impactful as you'll carry the burden of any wasted stats indefinitely. Fortunately, starter classes do not have any restriction on your ability to create a desired build. All classes become identical once they reach a certain soul level. This level varies depending on how optimized your base stats are relative to your final build. The Knight and the Sorcerer class can both opt for the same melee build. 50 Vitality, 40 Endurance, 40 Strength and 40 Dexterity. The Knight is fully leveled by soul level 129, while the Sorcerer needs to reach soul level 137 because of the differences in their base stats. Which brings us to our first class category, Melee Builds. The Warrior, Knight, Bandit and Hunter are melee-centric classes, focusing on pure physical damage output and lacking any finesse with sorceries, miracles or pyromancies. The Bandit primarily focuses on strength weapons, starting out with the highest damage potential of all starting classes. You'll find few enemies able to stand up to the battle axe. Anything less than a glancing blow, however, will leave you vulnerable to counterattacks, as the weapon's unwieldy nature will throw you off balance. The Spider Shield boasts high poison resistance, a useful tool for the early to mid game. Its effect is most prevalent in Blight Town allowing you to bypass toxic and poison status ailments with ease. The Hunter is a red herring. Starting with 14 dexterity and the exclusive addition of a short bow, this class seems like a suitable choice for any dexterity build. However, with the additional point invested in attunement, the Warrior and Bandit class are marginally better, beating out the Hunter by just one level. The short bow is also readily available, mere minutes into the game, rendering many of the benefits of this class useless. The Warrior and Knight are geared towards visceral combat with a wide assortment of weaponry. The two classes are near indistinguishable, with any differences being purely stat-based. The Knight comes equipped with the highest defense and poise of all starting classes, a tank with high vitality, designed to take hits rather than outmaneuver them. The Warrior, however, is slightly more susceptible to damage and has little to no poise, making you more reliant on your shield in combat. Its true advantage as a standout class lies in its base stats. If you can overcome the initial lack of poise, you'll find this a very versatile class that will see you through to the endgame. Not a single point wasted, as it outshines the knight in all aspects. As a pure melee build, there is no better choice than the Warrior. The Wanderer, Cleric and Thief are hybrid classes, sacrificing weapon variety for a more specialized role. You'll likely outperform any pure melee build, but struggle to adapt to situations where your opponent has more favorable weaponry. Unlike the Sorcerer and Pyromancer, the Cleric lacks a wide array of offensive spells, aimed more towards a supporting role, casting healing miracles and temporary buffs. Equipped with the Heal Miracle and Mace by default, the Cleric is ideal for a hybrid strength build. Using your Estus Flask in tandem with your Miracles, it's unlikely you'll find yourself shy of a quick top-up on health. This allows you to use your Mace recklessly, taking full advantage of its Strike attribute, granting you an additional damage bonus against shields and heavily armored opponents. Designed for critical strikes, the Thief revolves around high-risk, high-reward maneuvers. Equipped with only a dagger and a small shield, 
Your main damage output will come from parrying incoming attacks and countering with reposts. The target shield and bandit's knife will provide you with a larger parry window and a higher critical damage modifier, trading consistent attacks for large bursts of damage. However, the thief's stats are less than ideal, spread wildly across the board. There is little the thief can do that another class can't do better and at a lower soul level. Its saving grace is the ability to carry two starting gifts, as the class has the master key by default. This is not recommended for new players though, as it breaks the flow of the game and you'll more than likely end up in areas outside your level range. The Wanderer is a class well suited to its name, combining multiple gameplay elements for a unique playstyle. A hybrid dex intelligence build, utilizing fast weapons and powerful sorceries. This class has a slow start however, armed with only a scimitar, you won't unlock the Wanderer's full potential for some time, and may struggle in the early game due to a lack of sorceries and a low damage output. The Sorcerer and the Pyromancer are pure caster builds, relying mainly on their ability to use a wide array of offensive spells and a reduced selection of supporting weapons. The Sorcerer is very similar to the Wanderer, able to achieve the same build at the same soul level. Your start, however, will be vastly different, relying less on your weapon and more on your castings of Soul Arrow, which is a destructive spell against early enemies, with the drawback of having limited usage. The only way to replenish your sorceries is by resting at a bonfire. Doing so respawns all enemies in the area and resets any progress made, presenting you with a tough choice to top up on your expended sorceries, or to push forward with only a dagger and a small shield. It should be noted that the sorcerer can manually aim spells with the use of binoculars, found early on in Phylink Shrine Graveyard or as a starting gift. This method of aiming spells is time consuming and only sees any substantial benefit on stationary enemies. The Pyromancer starts at soul level 1, the lowest of all starting classes. Despite its low level seeming like a setback, it's amongst the top tier of class picks. Having a favourable stat spread allowing for the use of either strength or dex weapons, and a powerful range of pyromancies available early on. Comparative to other casters, this is one class you'll see consistent benefits from throughout your playthrough. Miscellaneous classes are without purpose or a defined role, Fortunately enough, there's only one. The Deprived is a streamlined class, forgoing cumbersome weapons and armor, you'll be free to experience brisk wins to their fullest. This class has abysmal base stats, and provides no advantage outside of a niche challenge to increase the game's difficulty. Despite the club being a good starting weapon with similar traits to the Cleric's Mace, any benefits are outweighed by a lack of any starting gear at all. Classes are a template, more down to personal preference than a right or wrong choice, providing little in the way of any advantage other than optimizing your level to get the upper hand on the game's PvP interactions. Should you wish to maximize your available arsenal utilizing both strength and dexterity weapons, opt for the warrior class. If you'd like to specialize in either or, the Bandit and Cleric are a great choice for a strength-focused build. Similarly, the Wanderer and Pyromancer cater very well to dex builds. And if you'd like to ditch the melee combat entirely, dedicating yourself to an array of offensive spells, then look towards the Sorcerer and Pyromancer classes. So plan ahead, choose your gear wisely, prepare to die.